Hey, everybody. I am here with my, one of my favorite relief pitchers, TJ Antone, Captain Hook. Um, what is up, TJ? Hey, Rob. How's it going, man? Good, to, go good, to, good to see you. It's going great. How do you like that Captain Hook nickname? At first, I was like, man, like, I don't know. I'm still new in the league. And like, you know, I didn't want to like, I, I, you know, I just didn't want to like, you know, call myself something like that. But you know, just kind of roll. I just went with it. You know, they got some t-shirts made and just went with it. Yeah. I mean, it technically, if I make it up, you're not doing it. So you shouldn't feel bad about it. Right. I mean, like <laughs> that, you that was the, something. that was my thought process. You called me that I didn't call myself. that. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Um, like, like AG calls himself AG, which is, that's his alter ego. Like, I, yeah, up. Um, he's yeah. entitled to is no one's going to tell him not to. Yeah. No one's going to tell him not to. It's just a yeah. fact. Exactly. Exactly. So help me understand you, uh, you, you started out at, at, at TCU, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me, tell me about that. Tell me about your, your childhood pitching. Like, were, did you always want to be a pitcher? Yeah. Um, I, okay. So just going like through like select ball and stuff growing yeah. up. Um, I was, I was always, you know, one of the better arms on the team, maybe not the best, but you know, I'd say top three arms on the team. Um, my dad was very uh, controlling of the number of innings I threw uh, growing up. It, it was very strict. Like when I was 12, 13, 14, like, Hey, uh, he always told the coach, like no more than three innings a weekend or four innings a weekend. Um, he, he just, he, he knew kind of uh, a lot about baseball. He played baseball at Oklahoma um, university, of Oklahoma and played football there too. So, um, you know, I trusted him and, and he was looking out for me and, there were some other guys on our team that kind of got, you know, throwing a hundred pitches a game. He's 13 years old. It's like, oh, it's probably not the smartest idea. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, growing up and then I uh, really kind of came to um, started figuring myself out um, my sophomore year of high school. Um, I got moved up to varsity. I was actually playing with Noah Syndergaard. Uh, we went to the same high school and um, we, we went to playoffs and did well. Um, had maybe, I think I was probably 84, 85, you know, had a, had a, good high school curveball at the time and you know kept growing kept throwing a little bit harder um learned a slider my senior year of, of high school uh, my my high school baseball coach just wanted me to like have a different pitch so I was just fastball curveball mostly I was like super over the top um at the time so I was you know at the well, at the time I was like fastballs down in the zone big hook down straight 12-6 curveball no one knew about throwing up in the zone yet and um he just wanted me to have something else so I learned a slider it was bad. <laughs> it was just like a, a cut, a really bad cutter. Um, and I didn't learn that until like rap Soto came out and I started like actually looking at my stuff and like, Oh, this is a really bad. Pitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I went to TCU, uh, didn't get a ton of playing time, but like learned a lot there. Uh, really good, like really good pitching staff. Great coach. Uh, Kirk Sarlos was like helping me out. Learned learned how to throw a sinker there. Um, you know, Jim Schlossenagel, all time, like one of the legend. best coaches ever. Yeah. yeah. Legend. So, you know, just didn't get a ton of playing time. It was no bad blood. I was like, Hey, I just want to, I just want to go be a starter. I don't want to come out of the bullpen. They respected it. Went to Weatherford, um, Flint Wallace down there. He, he was the pitching coach. Um, I was going to ask time. that. Yeah. I know Flint. Yeah. Flint's a great, great guy. I mean, yep. um, he, I guess my high school baseball coach coached Flint in high school. So there was like some connection there and, um, you know, just trusted him. He had a velocity program. He was like, you need to throw harder. And I was like, okay, then I'll throw harder. Like no one, you know, everyone wants to throw harder. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I did well there. I you know, start, I think I ran it up to like 96, 97, uh, in Juco I had a bunch of, a bunch of punch outs, which got, got me noticed, uh, got drafted by, in the fifth round by the Reds that year. Um, I had, I had re-signed at Auburn, but, you know, just decided not to go, um, cause I wanted to play professionally. Then my professional career started. I was just a sinker slider guy. Um, still with the with the bad slider, Rap Soda started coming out. I started looking at it and was like, this probably isn't like this is like a really bad cutter. Um, so I that was I went, I had Tommy John coming back from that. I went to driveline a couple years later. They helped me shape my slider a lot better and um, just, you know, kept growing, kept learning. I'm, I'm just a learner of the game and, and wanted to know more and figure out how to make it better, how to make it better. And I'm always searching for that 1%. And I think, I think for me that, that chase, that pursuit for the 1% is, 
um, even to this day is like what's helping me become who I am today. So I think what you just said is really important for people to understand because I think a lot of folks um, only listen to their coaches. They don't take their career in their own hands. And mm-hmm. I think it's really important for pitchers to take ownership, players in general, people in general, take ownership yeah. of your careers because in the end, you don't know, I mean, most coaches mean well, but they don't know everything. And if, you know, Correct. You, yeah. And you being able to, take over looking at the rep soto going to drive line figuring out what works for you is is extremely important i think yeah i think i think we as players are our best coaches um like we should be able to coach ourselves the best we know what cues what verbal cues work for us what mental cues work where we need to be in our batting stance where we need to be going down the mound like we are the ones that have to make those on the fly adjustments you you can't wait for your coach to tell you what to do all the time and I think um I think that's something that was like when when I was growing up there was like the lesson you do lessons you go to lessons you know you go to the guy and he'll give you lessons he'll give you these verbal cues all right get your hand out front and you know, make sure you ride your backside, like these little verbal cues. And some of them work, you know, some of them clicked. Okay. That makes sense. But I think uh, kind of like the way driveline and uh, has their setup and the way like I like to teach kids too, is, is through like constraints and like feeling um, where to be and like feeling how to like execute a pitch instead of like mentally, like coming up with words that would have to click with the kid. Yeah. You know, I, I actually think a lot of old school coaching is like mental tricks they do to kids. Like when they'll tell you to do something. And if it did, if, if you did well with it, they're like, see, there you go. Keep yeah. doing that. And then if you didn't, it's That'll like, work. right. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things. Like I keep telling, uh, you know, I was coaching in high school and the head coach would yell at a kid. Like it, it ends up never being the pitch that was called. Like the, if a coach is calling pitches, it's never that coach's fault. It's always something that pitcher yeah. did. You didn't hit your spot. 100%. You didn't do it. hundred percent. And I keep telling kids like all you, if you get people out, no one is going to ever, you know, tell you anything. So exactly. Yeah. I think something that uh, Caleb Cotham, he was with us last year he's with the Phillies now, but it's something that he always would say is, you know, have good stuff and throw it for strikes, like pound the zone with good, with good quality pitches. And like, I think that reigns true because like you, you're always like, you're never going to always like perfectly you're human. No one's going to perfectly execute every single pitch. Like, but if you have overall good stuff and you do hang a pitch, like you're, you're playing your cards that your quality pitch is going to beat his swing. If you have average to below average stuff and you're not quite hitting your spots that day, you leave one in, up in the zone, that ball's going to go a long way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was talking to uh, Tyler Glass now, and he said that the Rays' yeah. philosophy is get these unicorn pitches, get these outliers, and tell them to throw the ball down the middle. Like, in the end, challenge hitters with your best stuff versus nibbling on corners and stuff like that. Absolutely. No, I, I completely 100% agree with what he said there and what the whatever the Rays think on that. That's, that's very <laughs> smart. Yeah, they've been pretty, pretty solid for a while. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So what is the key to, to spin Cincinnati? I mean, everybody, you know, that's a, it's a, it's a great nickname. So yeah. like, what is, what is their, what is the main secret? Like how, how is everybody able to spin the ball so well? I know Kyle's involved there too. Kyle's overrated for anybody out there. <laughs> Kyle Bode, de- de- nobody. Big overrated. Guy. Big overrated. We don't <laughs> like him at all. He doesn't oh, care man. what I think, as a matter of fact. So I love even, Kyle. He's yeah, no, Kyle's dude. my Kyle's my favorite. I know Kyle for so long. So really? like, I was one of the first driveline guys for my son. My son was uh, maybe 12. Yeah, yeah. I actually remember reading that article about that. Yeah. I I mean, you know, at the very early day, I can tell that he was very smart and knew what he was doing yeah. and figure it out. Uh, yeah. And I think it's awesome, like, to have these guys that mix – pitching with also the mm-hmm. science behind it without making it too geeky right yeah yeah there's definitely a, the the mix of art and science and i think when you kind of uh hit that harmony between the two like that's when you're really like pitching is like okay i'm gonna play my cards based on the, st- the stats of you know x y and z of this guy can't hit this pitch or 
maybe my best pitch in this situation is this pitch, but like, there's also the art of pitching. It's like, okay, well, I've thrown that pitch 10 times in a row. I should probably switch it up, you know? And then, then, okay. Then you start thinking, should I go up, down? Do I change his eye level? Do I go in and out? Do I move his feet? Do I go stretch it across? Do I throw it for the corner? Do I throw it for four inches off? Do I throw it for six inches off? You know, there's all the balance of it uh, within the game, which is, which is cool. Cause all, all those decisions are being made like while you're coming set and it's, it's so fast and, and it's, it's all about the preparation because you have to make those decisions really fast. It's really cool though. It's, it's, it's fun. It makes me think back to my last outing, how um, it, the big, you know, it was a big moment. And I, I chose the, you know, we chose a slider and I hung it to half and he hit it out and just like how fast that was rolling on me. And I was like, dang, did I pick the wrong, wrong pitch or did I just throw the wrong spot? You know, just thinking through that. And yeah, it, it's pitching's fun though. It's, it's a great time. So what, what did, I mean, do, do they just scout for guys that spin the ball well? Are there little tricks to optimize that? What is what is the overall philosophy? I think the Reds are looking for guys with outlier pitches um, overall. And then maybe they're also looking for guys that um, maybe have a pitch that's close that needs just a little bit, maybe just like something that they know that has worked for another guy and they're going to take a chance um, to like, make that pitch better. Like maybe his slider is like already good. He's got like a seven inch, you know, lateral moving slider. It's like, okay, I think we could stretch this like 10 to 15, like just like, or he already has an outlier fastball, like do little. Um, and then they want to help him, you know, maybe with a curveball or something. But I think we overall for like Spincinnati, I think we do a really good job, like as a team, um, as players, like communicating with each other and, and not, like, yes, our coaches are helping us, but I think, you know, we, we're me and, you know, Sims, we're off to the side. We're talking about our grips. We're talking about our thought processes on how we're throwing this. We're talking about, you know, where we're aiming when we're throwing and how, how we're exactly what we're doing, what we're thinking with our body. And we're, you know, he's taking that information and taking some for himself and then moving on and, and trashing some stuff. And so I think we're just all like feeding off each other and, and working together. And it's, it's really fun because, like, you know, one guy has success with one pitch and you're like, Hey, I think I can help you with this. And everyone's open to it. No one feels like their toes are getting stepped on. We're all just trying to help, you know, each other. And, and everyone, even like you got someone like, again, Doolittle, he's been in the league for 10 years and, you know, he's asking me questions and I'm asking him questions. And it's, re- it's, it's amazing. It's, it's truly amazing. I think. I mean, ideally that's the way it should work, right? Like y'all are on yeah. the same team and you want to learn from each other and you have Sonny 100%. Gray who is such a, I mean, who is a fantastic, uh, reference for everybody i would imagine too like incredible i love talking to sunny he's uh it was really cool last year having bauer and sunny because they're like very similar but they're also very different um the way they kind of go about like the way they think about situations like trevor's very heavy on the on the science side like you know he's gonna go analytical but he's still like he's still a pitcher he knows how to pitch and then sunny is like a pitcher he's like an artist on the mound and then like he has all these crazy like comeback two seams and banging curveballs and incredible sliders and it's like how he like mixes all that together and just kind of like the way he works it is like is his little masterpiece but then he's also like learning from trevor like or he was learning from trevor about okay well this pitch spins like this so we're gonna use it in this situation it's like whoa you guys are blowing my mind i've never heard this stuff before it's it's incredible yeah so how big of an influence was bauer on that staff last year Big, yeah. I, I think he helped. I think, um, I think in two realms. Uh, one, we all saw his consistency of work. He has a very uh, calculated plan. The way he goes about his like his five day rotation and and what he does each day and how he prepares. And so I think that kind of um, rubbed off on some of us to like be you know be a little bit more calculated with the way we go about our daily work. Um, and then also just what like the way like his pitching you know him just talking through I mean is it Cy Young winner now it's just learning from that guy and he's been through failure and now he's been through success so um and he's bounced around and and he's learned and it sounded like he's gotten better and more mature every single year so um you know just learning from him on on the on the maturity slash like being a baseball player standpoint um you know I thought he was a big help to me for sure and I think the the overall confidence, like to go out there and he's he is a cocky MFer on the mound. And I think, he is. And and you know what? It it makes the game more watchable, but I think it feeds everybody else doing that. Like th- that was kind of the team last year. 
yeah, like to, to see him in 19 when he came over to the Reds, um, you know, I've always watched Bauer and then I, I was so excited when he came over to the Reds. I'm like, I have an opportunity to meet him and like talk to him. And then he just, he came over to the Reds and it was like really bad, just really <laughs> bad in, in 2019. I think yep. he had like a six or seven ERA. And, um, and you're like, I don't want to come talk back to then. that guy anymore. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but, he's kind of sucks. This guy's not as good as I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no. And then watch him come back in spring training and just be like, you know, not, like nothing affected him. He's just super confident in his work and his due diligence and, and him to go in there and then just execute and go in and, and win the Cy Young. You know, it was a shortened season, and uh, but he he did it. You know, he's the best in those 60 games. And it, it was incredible to watch. It really was. Yeah, and he's carried it over this year too. So, I mean, and, yeah. and he carried it. Over. So what is the big, you mentioned a little bit about mental stuff, like being able to brush things off. You have a bad outing, um, and then you come back and you can't let, you can't let that fester. What do you do personally to like mental game wise? Yeah. I, I think something that's uh, separated me and like helped me through the minors for sure is I, I read in a book somewhere. I don't exactly remember who I'm quoting from right here, but I'm quoting from someone. And in this book, it always talked about there's winners and there's learners. Like there's no losers. I mean, you can be a loser, but like, you're not going to accomplish anything. So like when you win, like you're obviously doing something right. You continue down this path, you do the same thing. And then there's learners. Like when you don't win, well, what goes on? Like you have to learn from the situation. You have to, you know, grow from it. And so I think that's kind of like the way I've always approached um, failure is, okay, well, I'm not like, this doesn't just mean the world just ended for me. Like I just blew a save against the Cubs, you know, this situation that just happened. Yes. It's very incredibly frustrating. Um, but you know, after the game, it's like, well, what, what did I do wrong? Did I do anything wrong? Did I just miss a pit? Did I miss, you know, throwing a wrong spot, like kind of going over it and like learning from it. Okay. It's gone. It's over. Let's move on. So, you know, I'm getting ready for the game tonight. Like I remember, and I learned from the, the past, like mistake that I made, but move on, you know, I, there's always tomorrow. Is there a lot of visualization involved in your pitching or do you just, uh, I mean, how do you go about, how, how do you go about learning like that? Um, like preparing for pitching, a game. Yeah. Like preparing for the game. I always, I'll go through the entire scouting report, uh, by myself. I just look over, we, they send a pitching report, like to our iPads and we can go look at all their hitters. So I'll just, I'll glance at those to see, I look at, um, just like our approach. Like, do we want to be fastball heavy or slider heavy or curveball heavy, um, or a good mix to a guy? What's his damage area? Um, so I just like pitches to avoid or areas to avoid. Um, and then I always look at, um, their swing tendencies. So like, are they, Oh, Oh, are they ambushers? Are they, Oh, oh patient guys? Um, can I, can I possibly steal a strike? Can I, or do I have to like locate the first pitch? So just like kind of game planning each, each batter, but that's pretty like high level. I just kind of skim through that, make sure I have a good understanding of them. Then I'll go through and we, they also send us videos of, um, like the hard hit balls or last 10 hard hit balls or last 10 strikeouts and all of the above. So we can go in and actually see their, see their swing profiles. And then if I need additional, I usually go into true media and see how guys set up a hitter. Like say, like we're facing Tim Anderson tonight. Um, I want to see like, okay, well he might strike out on sliders a lot, but I want to go see like how pitchers have set him up on sliders and then see like, okay, are they going, fastball in fastball in and then ripping one away and he's swinging at it and he's chasing it or are they dotting fastballs away and you know for balls and then they like locate a slider you know what what it, what is it that makes him swing or makes him strike out on a certain pitch so there's definitely some due diligence to do but um you know just gotta take my time and and do it sometimes i i want to be hands off and be like no i'm just gonna go out there and pitch and then sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't so <laughs> yeah I, yeah i think guys are different uh, when i talked to uh ag he just said he likes to go out there and just compete and yeah, he's yeah, definitely but, a com he's a competitor i mean you you can see it he goes out there and he throws his best stuff in the middle of the plate and, and you know he does really well yeah um so one thing I was wondering is, do you think about like when you're on, when you're on the bump, do you think at all about how do you tunnel your pitches together? Are you thinking about uh, how they work off each other, a pitch you just threw, or is it just natural? Um, I, I would say, I, I think a little bit about it, but it, I would say it's more natural though. Um, I, from what I've noticed, I'm not a huge tunneler. 
Uh, I, I do it a little bit, I think on accident. I don't, <laughs> every once in a while, I'll throw the curveball and be like, okay, this fastball, like out of the same plane will like work perfect right here. Um, and, but like, then you have to execute really well. So uh, it's, a, it's a good balance of just, then it, it's count dependent too, because if it's like, if I throw a good curveball for a strike and then it's two, two, it's like, well, do I want to waste a fastball or do I just want to throw another good competitive pitch in the zone? There's all the, I think it's a, it's a good balance. I think I do a good job of balancing like, okay, let me just throw good competitive pitches in the zone instead of like, sometimes I'm like, okay, let me set this guy up and then work back out of the bullpen. It's a little bit tougher as a starter. I think it would be a little, there's a little bit more art to it. Right. I could, I could definitely see that. I mean, you don't have, you have to get in there and it's like zero to a hundred real quick and, and yeah. go at somebody. Yeah. Max effort, every pitch. Yeah. So one thing I was wondering, and I've asked this of a few folks, do you think hitters pick up spin? Like when you're spin, you, your spin rate is insane. So do you think mm. hitters are actually able to pick it up or does everything just look like a red blur to them? Do you ever ask? Anybody? <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't asked anybody that I'll probably, I want to ask, uh, Naquin because he's usually pretty honest with me. I remember I faced him in, in spring training. Um, but from, I would, I would assume since I spin it well, that it's a little bit tougher to pick up it. I've seen like pitch visualizations of like what balls look like spinning at maybe 2,200 RPMs and 25 and 28 and 3000. So it's like when it starts spinning more, the ball just looks like a white cue ball. <laughs> it right. just disappears. It's, I don't know if it's spinning backwards or forwards or what it's doing. So um, yeah, I think that, I don't think they can pick up spin very well. Yeah. That seems to be the overwhelming, uh, like everybody fans always say, oh, he's just not recognizing the pitch, but most, I, I think most hitters don't. Um, I talked to Adovino I, I think, about that. He said the same thing, 3000 RPM is about the limit. And then all of a sudden everything just looks, looks white to you. Yeah. I think that they can pick up, um, the, like the way it comes out of your hand. So like for me, my curveball pops a little bit. Um, and so I think the hitters don't have that long to like decide if they're going to swing. So I think like for me, my curveball, my slider, it pops a little bit. So they go shut down because I typically go ball to strike on those pitches. And so they just shut it down and say, oh, it's a ball. And then it like rips back in there for a strike. And then they have to respect that pitch now. They're like, okay, now the pitch that pops, I have to swing at because I know he's going to throw it for a strike. And so that's where I, that's the game I play is like, there's the ball to strike and the strike the ball and where exactly you start it and like how you make it shape to like either make the hitter commit or make the hitter like just sit and, and not, you know, hope it's a ball and, and then you're kind of like ripping it back in the zone or whatever. Yeah. That's the other thing that, that you'll find uh, can drive you crazy. If you're so, I mean, you know, I have that flat ground stuff too. And somebody looks at a bullpen yeah. and goes, well, those weren't strikes. I'm like, it doesn't matter if it ends up a strike. It just matters if you make it look like a strike and you get a hitter yeah. to swing at it, then it is a strike. It's, yep. The hitters, the, it's tough to hit, man. It, after being back in the box, uh, you know, being on in, in NL, like it isn't, it's crazy. These guys are, I mean, I've, I've faced some like pretty good lefties and I mean, this stuff is gross. Like this guy <laughs> threw me, I forgot who it was. The guy on the giants threw me a change up and it went like, it felt like it moved like four feet out of the zone. I, I committed to it full commit. I'm like, wow, that was impressive. <laughs> but do you think that helps you though? Because then you know that like what a hitter's facing when they face you. So you have yeah, a little more confidence, right? hundred percent. Yeah. Being in the box on this and it's like, wow, these guys are, they're dealing with a lot. They're thinking through a lot. So um, yeah, I think that helps me be <clears throat> like, less like you know nibbly on the corners just like all right just just attack this guy like let me throw my best pitch and see what happens is that generally your personality though are you like a very type a you want to go at somebody you want to challenge them in kind of everything for sure yeah 100 percent. yeah i'm i'm as type a as they come <laughs> does that help <laughs> do you think do you think a relief role is made for you then like a you know anywhere from late innings to closing to because you thrive under that pressure and you put that pressure on yourself. Yeah. I mean, what, like, I honestly, I don't really have a choice. So I'm just doing the best, <laughs> whatever role they, they put me in. So um, yeah, I just, I, I'm just happy to be in the big leagues and, and, and pitch at this level. It's, it's really cool. And I don't really care where they put me, like I said, so, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it, whatever role they want me in. Well, you know, what's funny is you're one of those guys that when anybody watches you pitch, they naturally like you. Like it is, you're a fan favorite. I think it's just like this, uh, 
it's almost like a an uns, like a like this charisma. You you'll walk off the the bump, you'll do your little K strut, your skip, and all that. Uh, but it's just you're fun to watch. Your stuff's nasty, but you play into it really well. I don't know if you intentionally do it or if that's just you. I, I think that's just me. I don't. Uh, I'm, you know, something that Amir always told me, like last year, is he just said. He said, be you, like, don't do anything else. Don't try to impress anybody or do it for the fans. Like, just be you, like whatever that is. Like if it is being, you know, fancy and pounding your chest and, you know, strutting off the mound, like do that. But if you want to be, you know, like a Cole, like, or a Kluber where he like punches out the side and just walks straight off the mound, like, yeah, just, you know, poker face. Like I couldn't do that. I'd be fired up. (laughs) Even if I was a starter, I'd be, I'd be jacked up punching out the side. So um, I think that's just who I am. And I just kind of like, let my, you know, I play emotional. I like, I like to just, uh, you know, let my emotions get involved and, um, and just play the game. That's my abilities. Do you think that's hard for players to, to be themselves? Like, I think a lot of people think that they have to impress their coaches. Coaches have a different mindset, like, especially traditionally coaches were like, you know, act like you've been there before. Don't show emotion. (laughs) Don't let them see anything. And it seems the game is changing, but I think a lot of players want to please their coaches and maybe that hurts them because they're constantly thinking what their coach is wanting them to do versus what they think they should do. That's that interesting. Sense? Yeah. I, I, yeah, it does. I think that, um, I think some players may be a little, you know, shy, you know, out there and, and, but I, I think, I think majority of the players at this level um, like being emotional. And I think, I think you're right. The game is kind of changing. You're starting to see a little few more bat flips and, and, you know, the Tatis and Bauer thing and, and, like people like that. And I, I I've always, love it. I don't care. Yeah. If somebody, yeah. I love it. It doesn't bother me. If, if you got me, like if you got me and you're going to flip the bat, throw it to the moon. Because if I punch you out, I'm, I'm going to let you know that I punch you out. And that's cool. Like that's part of the game. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like guy pimps a home run and he gets smoked the next time. Like, I'm not a fan of that. I, I don't, I don't like, I, I think that's stupid. I also think Evo shields are stupid, but <laughs> that's a different conversation. <laughs> you want it to hurt if you're going to hit somebody yeah that's right like (laughs) like there's there's some like you know watching pitchers in the 80s and 90s it's like watching like especially like even nolan ryan like he would let you know like fastball inside like meant something you know like a fastball inside today it's like ah there's my elbow with a giant concrete shield on it like i didn't even feel that (laughs) and it's 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 not tougher to pitch or anything but there's games you can play with like brushing a guy back a little bit and then like throwing a hook or dotting a fastball away off of that. And, you know, he's not going to commit over the play. He's not going to be looking for that pitch of the play because you're playing with his eye level. And it's a little bit tougher to do whenever they have all the protective gear on. I mean, it is what it is, but um, I, yeah, that's just how I feel about Evo shields. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so we're saying that hitters have unfair advantages and we need more advantages as pitchers, right? Like we need everything. We need to K everybody. That's right. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah. Do you think moving the mound, like, so say they're talking about moving the mound back to, to oh, even Lord. it out for like, what the heck is that? Like to me, if you're a hitter, they're just basically telling you, you suck so bad. We've got to help you now. Like get better. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I I'm totally disagree with them trying to change the game, um, speed up the game. Like it, people know what you're, they're getting into when you come to a baseball game, you know, they know like, okay, it's going to be, I'm going to be here for three hours and then drink some beers, get a hot dog and watch the game. Like there's no need to like, I I do like the extra innings with a man on second that helps a ton. Like all, most of the games I've been in for extra innings, it's like one inning or two innings max. And then like the game's over, which is, which is great because that helps out the bullpen a lot and helps out just players feel better. And over the course of long season, if you have a couple of 14 or 15 inning games like that, it hurts. So I do like that game, that change, but sh- making the mound longer, limiting pickoffs to first base, like all these rules, like that are, they're just, I think they're very dumb. I honestly, I just, th- I don't think, I don't like it at all. Yeah. So t- to me, the game seems like it's in the best place it's been in a long time. You have exciting players yeah. that are showing emotion. People are watching more now. Um, strikeouts yeah. are up, but you know what? It means that getting a run is that much tougher. And then if someone hits a home run, you're right. Throw it to the moon. This is yeah. it's like a goal in soccer. You don't see anybody sitting there going, good game, good game, good game. I mean, they yeah, throw yeah. up their shirt. They're doing like every <laughs> sport does that. Why can't we yeah. do that in baseball and to change it now? Why would you do that? Yeah. I, I, 
baseball at the end of the day, baseball is an entertainment sport. Like we are there to entertain the fans. I was saying the other day, like, I think they should let us use sticky, let the pitchers use sticky. And I think they should cork their bats and juice the balls as much as they can, because like, we're trying to miss barrels. We're not trying to like, let them hit it, you know? And if they hit it, if you get it and you, I want to you know, let it go, you know, I want, I want it to happen. So, you know, I want, those are the big entertainment moments. Like you're saying the strikeouts, the home runs, um, and I think I also think they should they should quit doing blackouts. I think the oh, blackouts are hurting yeah. us too. Yeah, I, I know I, you you you've seen those because you probably can't get your hands on all the film you want. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's uh it it's I don't understand it. Like to me, you don't grow the sport by making fewer people watch the sport. I don't oh, know, yeah. like how does that work? It makes well, like you know, they probably have some twenty year you know contract they with do, like I'm the sure. local stations and stuff, but that's still like. It's just tough because we, we need to have, like, especially where our society is today, like everyone has access to technology. And so it's like, why can't we have free access to whatever we want to watch? You know, I, if you're going to pay totally for it. Agree. I totally agree. And I think the one thing, so one thing I noticed is, and this is a little bit of an aside, but it's along those lines, um, Comcast and ACC network, they couldn't get together. So it's Comcast didn't cover the ACC, um, they have the ACC network. I'm a yeah. Tar Heel. So I wanted okay. to watch basketball and football and yeah. all that. And I couldn't watch the games without mm. like subscribing to some ridiculous thing. And it's just a matter of principle, like, like drinking yeah. with guacamole, I am not going to pay $60 a month for <laughs> just the ACC network. Just not going to happen. Yeah. But then it made me lose yeah. touch with the team. So you're yeah, losing 100%. fans. Yeah, I think so too. I, th I think, I don't think it's uh and then you have, and then there's the whole other conversation about, you know, things that like Bauer does where he puts like, promotional stuff on his cleats and then the God league doesn't it. like that it's like well what what can we do <laughs> like you know there's actually a rule that like if, if i took a picture with my uniform on like i can't actually post that because that like that the league's logo is like on social media like they could ask me to remove it if they want it yeah i think and i it's think just a lot like, of those there's a lot of rules did. well i mean I'm, I'm like the guy who fought the social media thing for baseball and they changed it which was awesome like they kind of yeah. get the fact they need to to be a little more uh you know with the times i think they're done a i'm glad you did that yeah i know like it was <laughs> it was like a week where i was going back and forth and they're like then they contacted me and said we love what you do actually i mean we think you're so i was like why great awesome <laughs> like <laughs> like yeah. let me do it then yeah. I mean, you got more followers than probably half the league does. Like people love your content. I was actually going to ask you, are is this like a full-time gig or is like you all day just like scouring for good pitches? I do have a day job, but I do scour for good pitches too. So I like to go back and forth. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to do this more full-time though, because this is way more fun than like, you know, yeah. you know, I'm a lawyer. So it's like, yeah, great. That's what I thought. I thought yeah. You were a lawyer. You can tell by my grilling of you that I'm the lawyer. Right? Like, <laughs> Just good questions. Good yeah, questions. exactly. Um, so let's go through your pitch grips because I know everybody wants to know it because you are yeah. absolutely filthy. Um, I'd love to know like what you think you do different from other folks and, um, and just, just take us through and we'll have, we'll, we'll see what we got. <clears throat> yeah. So um, my fastball, like last year I was like kind of like cutting it a little bit. So I just adjusted my fastball grip. I was traditional, just like, fingers kind of split the uh, you know split the baseball um and i i think my middle finger when i was watching like edgertronic on it it was actually tilting up like this so i was pushing through like kind of the bottom side of the ball um so we worked on that i just changed my my fastball to like now my middle finger is right down the middle of the ball and then i just like everything else is just um around it i had to move my thumb up a little bit too i was tucking my thumb like this and so i had to move my thumb up so I think that's actually, it helps me stay through the ball a lot better um, because now it's rolling off my middle finger and it's actually staying like true on the spin. I've actually noticed a slight uptick in velocity as well um, you're compared to last year. So yep. yeah, I'm behind it. And it's like one mile an hour, but like that's, that's huge uh, for me just because it helps my, helps my other stuff play better. Um, change up. I haven't thrown it yet this year, but it's in the back pocket. I was going to so, ask you like, about that. I want to yeah. see this. Hit, hitters hit, hitters are gonna be like oh yeah he doesn't have a changeup i'm gonna rip it on someone they're gonna be like what was that <laughs> you told me he didn't have a changeup <laughs> yeah they, they're gonna think about it um yeah so i just thought like traditional like four seam changeup so uh fastballs here i just kind of switch my fingers over uh i have quite a bit of pressure on my thumb when i throw it because i want it to kind of like like delay it coming out 
Yep. Um, if it slips too early, I get my me, I get my hand under it and I kind of like push the ball. Um, so I want it to like delay to like let my fingers like work on top of the ball. And then um, I've been kind of playing with exactly like how I like finish it. But as long as my fingers are on top of the ball, it tends to like roll out the side of my hand like this and have some sort of like um, like lateral spinning um you know kind of ufo i call it ufo or disco ball change up action where it has, doesn't have a lot of ride um let me so you're not intentionally it's just, pronating it's just mostly your 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 setup and you're taking it through uh and it's just naturally coming off because of the way you're gripping it yeah yeah exactly is the audio good i did jump yeah yeah you're fine okay um yeah i'm not like intentionally like pronating it I'm, I'm just trying to keep my thumb on it as long as possible my hand will naturally pronate that's right so that that's something i don't think a lot of pitchers get is you don't have to if you're holding it if you're feeling like you're holding it a little bit longer the ball will naturally pronate because you're that's the way your hand yeah is. yeah i think i think everyone's um the kind of mental side of it is different so like whenever i teach kids in the off season some kids i have to tell like hey you got to pronate like back here right. like and it works for them and then some kids i'm like hey you got to like actually think about supinating and then it like makes their hand like work you know out front a little bit better so i think everyone's a little bit different when it comes to that um but for me i just think about like keeping my hand on top of the ball um as best as possible it's not a bad pitch i, I just haven't ripped it out yet all right tim um, anderson's gonna get one right <laughs> he might no no no, yeah. no i can't yeah i won't i won't put that out there yet so we'll he's you... getting the best <laughs> he, he knows what he's getting out of it. um the, the interesting enough the slider and the curve i hold exactly the same it's just like what i do different i manipulate them differently um so i hold them like this i'm actually horseshoes in my hand yep. um and i just like wrap my finger um down the seam but like slightly on this side of it so I have some leverage there. And then the index finger is, uh, it's actually on the slider, it's a little bit tighter than the curveball. So the index finger has some good pressure on it, but I would say most of the pressure is on the middle finger and then the thumbs on this seam. So I'm almost splitting the ball like sideways. And then, mm -hmm. um, so for the slider, um, when I'm working on it, when it's best is when I can throw like a back door one to a lefty, uh, like throw it or, or front hip to a righty. So that's kind of my, my, thought process is like get my hand out front um and like finish my middle finger like 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 kind of like pull around the front of it and to the side so i'm pulling so as it's coming out i'm pulling around the front and to the side so it's spinning uh typically i want the axis to point straight at the umpire's mask mm -hmm. so that might be something that i'm different is like i actually think about what i want the pitch to shape like when i'm throwing it um compared to some people just grip it and rip it and hope for the best. I'm actually trying to shape it like in a particular way. Some, some at bats, I might get over the front of it and make it go more down. And then some, I'm actually trying to make it sweep like laterally a lot. Um, and so are you so, thinking about the, the spin axis pointing at it or are you, so different yeah. from target, you're actually wanting the, the dot or whatever to this axis to, to point at something. Correct. Yeah. 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 So the aiming point would be, like for me, it would be like a righty's hip is where I'm throwing it. Um, that spin axis allows like, so a typical like perfectly spinning gyro ball would be like this. Yep. I would want it just to be tilted up a little bit um, and doing the same thing, just the, the nose of it tilted up so that, and then typically <clears throat> something I learned this year and I didn't realize is like, as the ball is going through the air, the axis is actually changing. Yep. Um, so when I, when I have it tilted up, the ball tends so as it's spinning it's spinning like this the ball tends the bottom of the ball tends to fall more and it ends up turning into like a a direct like almost the opposite of a change up like direct, like spinning the other way slider so now it's started here came out really hard but now it's starting to tilt up and it, that's when it kind of like grabs and takes off i didn't realize that it's i really have never heard any i know it it happens but i've yeah. never heard a pitcher talk about either one of these two things shaping like thinking of the spin axis instead i've heard everybody where i'm going to aim it but not yeah. how they wanted the spin axis to shape and visualizing that and then understanding that it actually may have two different breaks as the ball as a spin axis shifts and you're yeah. actually yeah so that's uh that's great stuff it, the way i um think of it is like uh 
or like the way when I'm explaining it to people is like a, a bowler and a, like when you bolt like a bowling. Um, so they spin it obviously and it's going down, it's going down and then it grabs and takes off. So that's like the same like kind of principle is what I'm looking for. So it comes out like spinning gyro, but as the, the tilt is like getting more extreme and it's spinning more, it, that's when it kind of grabs and takes off. Um, <clears throat> and then the curve, I'm just, I'm thinking essentially the same thing. I do let up a little bit of pressure on my index finger. Um, it's kind of just floats because I want it to have like room to work in this area instead of like restrict it coming out. I want yep. it to like kind of just like work through this area. And the biggest um, biggest thing for me this year has been not act- so I've always thought about trying to get my hand out front, right? And I'll try to explain this. Um, it doesn't always like if I'm if I'm slow getting up here and I'm just trying to get my hand out front. You know, sometimes it pops out back here. It's a really bad pitch or whatnot. So something that Bauer actually showed me was like, if your shoulder actually gets out front, like your hand will naturally be out front because obviously it's connected. Um, so when I'm over here trying to lead with my hand and I'm not getting my shoulder out front, and that's when it, I'm throwing it from back here. I'm actually just trying to get my hand up and back and then just throw my shoulder out front because I know my hand will then work where it needs to work. Uh, which has made the pitch immensely more um, consistent for me this year and allows me to throw up for strikes. And I actually think it's, it's, uh, it's gotten me more spin efficiency because <clears throat> I'll try to explain this again. So if I'm, if I'm like out to the side, I'm throwing a curveball. it's really tough to get my wrist all the way around. Yep. If I'm throwing it like right here, it's just insanely tough to get there. Yep. So um, typically if I'm letting go of the ball here, ends up a lot of people end up throwing it and ends up being just like a really bad, like kind of slider slurvy thing. Yep. So if I'm able to get my shoulder out front, it, it gets my fingers to the front of the ball where it needs to be. So now my shoulders out front and now it's actually spinning in the orientation. I haven't changed anything. Arm slot is still the same. I'm just get, moving my shoulder out front. And it's allowing my, my finger to be where it needs to be. And it, it kind of pops and rolls and that, that orientation so very it's i don't know if that made sense it made sense to me yeah okay yeah so when people ask me like what do you think i I think about getting my shoulder out front if i can get my shoulder out front my hand is going to be in the correct position to like let the ball spin out i think that may also lead to some deception too in that if you're letting it back here you can pick it up better right i mean yeah oh yeah yeah if you're throwing it from back here yeah 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 so that that's it has multiple uh uses that cue yeah. Um, but that, yeah, that's, that's great. I've noticed a, a small uptick in, um, a small uptick in spin, a small uptick in spin efficiency, um, and strike throwing, throwing four strikes. So I, I, I like it this year. Have you always been able to spin the ball well, or is that something that you've taught yourself? Um, like since we've started tracking it, it seems like I've, I've always been able to spin the ball. Well, I used to throw like a true sinker in the minor leagues. Um, so I was actually trying to kill spin and then moving on to like triple A is when I learned that I had a a better fat, a better four seam. And they, for some reason, they mark all my fastballs as sinkers. They do. I know it's a four seam. I throw a four seam. I think it's what they're looking at is from past, like with the, in the minor leagues, like, Oh, he threw a sinker in the minors. So he's throwing a sinker now. But I'm throwing a four seam, and it, it. But the thing is, is sometimes it does have like some late action on it. So you know, whatever you want to call it, I just call it a hard ball for all I care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we may have to come up with a different name for it, but I mean, it is like you showed me the grip. It's a four seam grip, and yeah, it's four seam as I come. And so, have you ever thought about like going? Is there any thought about ever throwing a, a sinker again? I mean, that that it could play maybe. I guess your four seamer probably plays better with those two with those pitches than your sinker would, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the four seam plays better. Um, they're they're I think my changeup now is what my sinker was in the minor right. leagues. Um, I was in the minor leagues, I was 88, 93, you know, just located sinkers down. Um, but like, you know, now obviously I'm throwing a lot harder. So the changeup is typically 88, 93 and and moving in that orientation, that shape. So I probably should use the changeup in situations where I need a ground ball out, like right then. Do you ever feel it sounds stupid to say your changeup is ninety three? Like you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I would never have thought that I could say that someday. I thought it was absurd when I watched guys in the minor leagues throwing ninety mile an hour changeups, and then I'm over here doing the same thing. So 
uh, you know, it, a little bit of work and, and guidance, it, you know, velocity jumps. It, it's been, it's been cool. It's helped a lot. Were, were the velocity jumps, mechanical adjustments, physical adjustments, were they things you just got stronger, more mature, or did you make like one adjustment and it really helped you? Um, it's, it, it's a, a culmination of all of them. Um, you know, le learning just more me learning mechanical cues, learning better positions to be in, trying to like achieve those elite positions that like, I always, even you spoke of glass now earlier. I love that there's a picture of glass now with his arms, like way, way behind him. And I would look at that and be like, All right, I don't want to, I want to do that. Like that's the position I want to hit when my front foot hits the ground. And, um, so trying to achieve those like elite positions, because if you, if you hit those elite positions going down the mound, like it helps a ton it hel and it helps with your arm health too. You're just in good positioning. There's not a ton of stress, uh, going to your elbow or whatever that I've kind of, and I, I started to attack that after Tommy John surgery, when I learned it was probably pretty important to <laughs> hit better positioning coming down the mound, um, getting stronger as well. Like it well, really wasn't getting stronger. I, when I was at APEC training, um, some, something that they told me were like, Hey, you're, you're plenty strong, but you don't move very fast. And, um, I was like, Oh, okay. So what do you want me to do? And they were like, all right, we're going to do, they had this whole game plan of like me learning how to move faster and, and doing more speed stuff. And, um, it was tough. It was, it was pretty humbling too, because there's guys that were like way smaller than me that would just like rip a 10 pound med ball at a certain speed. And you're like, how can I not throw it as hard as you? Like I'm way bigger than you. And, you know, just teaching my body, like how to move faster, uh, being in better positions. And then just like, I think time, you know, you, you play the game long enough and you start to learn if you're a learner of the game, some guys don't aren't, you know, so much, uh, learners of the game. So I think it's kind of just everything. How important do you think velocity is overall? Like, is that something that is over, over analyzed, over appreciated, under appreciated, like in your game and in general, um, just like advice for kids out there. Yeah. I think for, uh, it's a really good question because it's easy to speak like, Oh, in the big leagues, it doesn't matter. You just have a slider and you're great. No, I, I think that, um, looking at, at baseball as a whole from, you know, youth, you know, high school, college and professional, um, you have to throw hard to get noticed. Have to. Uh, there's obviously the 90 mile an hour threshold that helps a ton. You throw once you throw 90, then it's like, OK, you have these you know opportunities start to pop up. Colleges start to come after you. You, you know, obviously there's guys that are throwing 90 that um, but they're maybe outliers with other pitches and stuff. So but velocity wise. 90 is like the first threshold um, of like getting opportunities to play at the next level, high schoolers and, and whatnot. Um, from there, I think the next like threshold is 95. Um, if you can, there's either you touch 95 or you sit above 95, um, both of which are really cool and both of which get you another opportunity to play further down the road. Um, talking more college kids into the, now you're talking to the professional realm. Um, I think once you get to the professional baseball minor leagues, all the way up to the major leagues, you have to have a secondary pitch. I there's one person I know who doesn't have a secondary. Well, he has a secondary pitch, but can live off of a fastball only. And that is Sean Doolittle. And I've never seen anyone else like that. That's a, that's a unicorn pitch. You know, that's the best pitch in the league. So with the fastball has like 24 inches of vertical. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So like, but everyone else has to have, you know, a, sec a secondary pitch. Um, and then I think it starts to trade off of, well, it depends on how good your secondary pitch is, is how much velocity or lack of velocity you can get away with. If you have an elite, elite, elite curveball, um, you know, the best in the league, then you could probably get away with the 91, 92 mile an hour fastball. But um, I think velocity only helps protect your other pitches in your repertoire. And it, and it does seem like even if you're throwing really hard, you still end up throwing more of your off speed stuff. It just makes it more, uh, I mean, you think about it, it's, it's tough for a hitter to make those adjustments because they have less time to do it. So if you're throwing hard, they have to make it a decision quicker and it would make your breaking stuff or, or change ups more valuable. Yeah. I, I noticed that as well. Like some, a lot of the harder throwers are now throwing more off speed pitches. Yep. Um, and, and I, I don't know why. And I, I think I know why, because they're just trying to protect their fastball or 
let like you know make them play off each other a little bit better but you notice if you look at the fastball usage percentages over the like last call it five ten years it's just going down like fastball usage is going down um but fastball velocity is going up yep so it's it's interesting it's like you would think oh fastball velocity is going up like we need to throw that pitch more but i think throwing a fastball is um it's just like the ego in the, in the man, like I want to throw a fastball, I want to throw a hard fastball, but that's the pitch the hitters hit the furthest. So you got to play, you got to play the game. Well, I, I talked to Bieber and he said, if he could add a pitch, it was, it was uh, Jordan Hicks 104 mile an hour sinker. So even, you know, Bieber wants to throw a ball 104 miles an hour. It's, yeah. like, it's like a dude thing. You just want yeah, to buy somebody. And I'll go into this off season and I'll try to throw a hundred pull down a baseball 105 and see if I can get to 101 next year. That'd be awesome. Well, Where do you now. live at? I'm in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, wasn't sure. Yeah. Um, you grew up in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Born in Oklahoma city, uh, moved down to Texas when I was seven in Mansfield, Texas. I Mansfield, gotcha. Texas so that's, is, the, is the promised land for big leaguers. Apparently, like, what was it like growing, like, uh, playing with Thor on the same team? <laughs> he was a different human back then, but uh, <laughs> I saw those <laughs> pictures of him. Yeah, he like, kind of was, there's yeah. pictures floating out there of, of what he looked like. But you no, know, he he was good. I remember. I specific. I always remember this one story. We were first round of playoffs and and facing some team that we just like absolutely annihilated and. Noah was going out for the seventh to like finish the game. And I remember I was in the dugout and I remember our coach saying, Hey, like it's the last inning, just like chill, throw fastballs on the middle. Like we're winning by seven, like just nice and easy fastball. Down the middle. They're just like, let them ground out. Like who cares? Like these aren't your stats anymore. It's playoffs. He was like, okay. And he like goes out there. And uh, I remember a brave scout like came over and was like, Hey, Noah was like 95, 98 last inning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Nice and easy fastballs down the middle in high school. It was 95, 98. It's like, okay, this guy's got it. I mean. Yeah, like, that had to be. Cool. Yeah, that's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's like the, uh, the, the freed Flaherty Giolito uh, staff that they had out in uh, California. You guys had. Yeah, that? that was cool. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of, um, it's cool how baseball has its little pockets. You know what I right. mean? Like, um, that reminds me of a book called The Talent Code. If you ever get a chance yep. to read that. Yep. Yeah. So we have like here, I mean, I'm sure you know, like the whole East Cobb uh, thing, yep. perfect game used to be based out here. So we have a lot of that here. Like Atlanta oh, yeah. has a, is, is a hotbed. You have Texas, which is a hotbed. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool to see that, like, I guess you challenge each other. Like you have the same, you know, you see, you're not shocked when you make it, when you've played alongside Noah Syndergaard, you know how good someone can be. Exactly. And that's something, so I don't know if you saw, but I opened a baseball facility in the off season, last off season, it's called Cova Sports. And that's something I really like is I'll go in there and the high schoolers will be training or something. I'll go in there and train myself. And it's like, <laughs> I like that they can come in and one, like learn how to respect someone's area when they're working. It's like, okay, that guy over there is big leaguer. Like, let me watch him and like respect his area and like see how he goes about his work. And that's what I like about it. It's like, they can learn by just watching me work and watching how I go about my business. And then it's cool to then like, I will stay and train. And the kids are like, you start to see kids like, you know, tighten up their work ethic and tighten up, you know, what they're actually focused on their movement patterns and see how they progress. And you're like, dude, I like this. Like you're moving, you're learning. Like it's cool. It's, it's really cool to be able to work with them. And then like, I did, I did a, that I don't know that that video that went around me pulling down 103 I was pulling down with one of the college kids that we work with so you know this I think it's cool that they can all we can all work together and like train together and um you know I can help college and high school kids and and way they're they're pushing me I and mean, that kid was pulling down 99 so um it, he was challenging me for sure yeah I think that's awesome because it's exactly what you were talking about before about picking in, in, instead of picking your teammates brains you can learn a lot from watching successful people training alongside them and maybe picking their brains every once in a while. You don't want to bug like any pro guy. You don't want to bug them yeah. too much, but watching yeah. is really important. Like, I think it's awesome. 
yeah, anytime we like here um, in Cincinnati, when we someone throws a bullpen, we'll go down there and watch. Like as a you know, as a bullpen, we'll we'll try and all go down there and we'll try and watch our starters like throw a bullpen. So it's it's really cool, not even like to ask them questions while they're throwing a bullpen, but just to watch them work and watch what they're trying to accomplish and say, oh, I never thought of like throwing in the triangle like that or using that pitch to like okay, it's like really interesting and like what they're trying to accomplish down there. Is there any pitcher that stands out for you as somebody that you model your game after that you would say, this is a guy who, who I like the way he goes about it. Uh, Maybe a role model type, or is there not like, do you just take things from different players or do you just think you're you're your own guy? Um, I think, I honestly think that I am a more of take certain things from certain guys. Um, I love, I love glass now's curveball. I love, I like, I like watching, uh, I like watching Bauer. I like, like the, what he, the energy he brings to the game. I like the art of Sonny. I like the, the swag of Chapman and like how he goes about just throwing absolute missiles. Um, like Kluber, like any, like I love the a little thing about all of these guys and, and I try to make it my own, but then I also, you know, want to be my own, my own self as well. But um, I definitely look at the elite, guys and try to chase after their elite pitches so are you looking at ever how they attack like like, is there somebody who you say has similar stuff to you and you want to see how they attack this hitter yeah um no i never honestly i never really do that i know i probably should that's a really good uh, thing to probably look up (laughs) but yeah i mean your stuff is kind of unique though i like you are off the charts as far as you know elite elite spin there aren't that many people that throw like you. There's, I mean, Devin Williams' changeup is going in the opposite direction of what your slider is going at about the same spin rate. Yeah, De- Devin Williams is incredible. I love watching him pitch. Uh, we kind of like grew, uh, it was kind of weird. We actually, I reached out to him in high school. Um, he was going to Missouri and I was going to TCU. We kind of just stayed in touch on Twitter. Um, and then just kind of like, you know, we actually both got injured uh, the same year in 2017. Like we met at a concert, like it was just kind of weird. We kind of stayed friends. And then now we're both in the big leagues. He had a you know rookie of the year last year. It's like, I was pissed at him because he took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> You've both no, been but, interviewed by Pitching Ninja. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah, I came up with yeah. nicknames for both of you. Oh, what's his nickname? Well, his nickname, his pitch is the airbender. So it's got. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, pit, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that, that's incredible. incredible. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, when I knew it was a special pitch when he faced us and Musakis came back and was like, I've never seen a pitch like that. I've never <laughs> seen a pitch like that. I was like, wow, that's oh. must be a really good pitch. Yeah. There was an, a, a bat against Votto too, where he did the same thing. And Votto was just like, he didn't, he didn't have any idea what to do against that. Like it, you don't, I don't see know it. how he spends it that, that, that much from that, like, when I throw a changeup and I want to spin it, I'm capping out at 2,200 on yeah. a changeup. I don't know how he does it. He had a 31-28 last game. Like that's is it, is it moving like 40 inches to the right? <laughs> yeah, like, it's crazy. It's, it's co- combination of like 20 horizontal and like 40 down. So when he gets it right, the, it is yeah, it's crazy. That's a crazy. It's like almost a screwball. It is because it has like a little top spin. Yep. I'll send you like, I'll send you him describing his grip. Actually, it's out there on my, on my YouTube channel, but it's, I'll, I'll uh, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like he's just an elite pronator, which sometimes means you can't, you know, you, you can't supinate well, or you'd not be able to throw Correct. a spin the other way. Um, Correct. That was well, one of my things why uh, I kind of maybe held off on throwing a change up yet this year is because I've been supinating so much, like, and I've I had the feel of it really well. So as soon as you start trying to go the other way, it's like, I can't do this and this. It's it's, it's a little it's a balance. It's a balance. Yeah, no, I think it's hard. Like there's only there's only a few players that are elite both ways. Um, yeah. Like Stro can't pronate very well, so he throws a, a split change. And yeah. uh, like I I kept sending him grips of of guys that are pronating. He's like I can't do it. Like I don't want to think about pronating. I want to think about the grip doing something. So he found yeah. it now. Yeah. That might be an interesting change for me next year. Doing a little, maybe a little Tyler Malley like split changeup thing. Yeah, I mean it's. A, 
I, I mean, I'm just Pretty saying good. that might that might work because because <laughs> apparently it is tough for like if you're thinking about pronating, that might be a good uh, might be a good solution. I don't know, man. I will send you all the grips you want, and you have to, Mally there to to borrow it from whenever you want. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Um, I know you've got a game and stuff. Like, who cares about that? I mean, it's way more <laughs> fun to talk. You're but, right. <laughs> I enjoy talking to you. Well, oh, where'd he go? Now I got a big look in no, my face. Am, yeah, there you are. Um, but maybe we'll do it again. You'll you'll tear it up. You go on a streak of like. Uh, I don't know, Kane, 12 guys in a row or something like that. Ooh, and like case that. struts and when case started the year this year, do not let Bauer go back to back. So we need to, uh, we need to make I'll, sure that I'll, 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 I'll come up with a little something extra for you next time. Cool, man. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for taking your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed speaking to you guys.